Welcome to the Global Prayer Network, with Rev. Dr. Seth O. Lardy. We pray this teaching will impact your life, and bring you closer in your walk with Jesus. Let's get ready to receive today's teaching from, Rev. Dr. Seth O. Lardy. Let's pray. God, thank you for bringing us to a new month. We find ourselves in a nation that is seemingly in a difficult place. But we know you said these things will happen. And so God, I pray now that you'll be with us to know that we must not just look at what is happening because the reality is we are on a mission. So help us God to understand our mission, understand our purpose, and be about doing that so that when you show up, when you show up, we can hear you say to us, well done, my good and fit for servant. So please bless us now and cause us to be a blessing in Jesus name, amen. We are back uh, to talk about the role of the word of God in the home, the role of the word of God in the home. The word of God is extremely, extremely important when it comes to our homes and how God wants it to be. The word of God is very, very important. And Today, we want to continue the conversation as we talk about the Word of God and how it leads to a prosperous living. As we said on Friday and the days gone by, that prosperity is not just money. That's one of the most uh, mistaken understanding of prosperity. Prosperity has to do with your health. Prosperity has to do with your relationships. Prosperity has to do with your love for others and others for you. Prosperity has to do with understanding your vision and your mission and your purpose for living. Prosperity has to do with the legacy, the contribution you are making to this world. Prosperity has to do with your name. What kind of a name you have. The Bible said in Proverbs 22, a good name is it's better to be chosen than silver and gold. So let us not think of prosperity only in the sense of money, wealth. No. Jesus, do you think Jesus would have left all the way come from heaven to come here just for you to get some money in your pocket? No, I don't think so. Because it was Jesus who said, I am come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Do you think that God will want to make us in his image just to have us have money? It was God who said, let us make humankind in our image, in our likeness, and let them be fruitful. Do you think that God will want us to meditate upon his word day and night just to have money in our pockets? No. And so we need to understand when we talk about the word of God and prosperous living, we need to understand, as we said, prosperity is a way of thinking and not just about money. And so today, what I'd like to uh, uh, begin to do with us 
is to see what the word of God has to say about a prosperous mindset, developing a prosperous mindset. Now, I know that we've been so indoctrinated into thinking that poverty equals holiness and righteousness. I don't want to think so. I don't want to think that poverty is the equivalent of being righteous. No, I don't want to think so. Poverty is poverty. And prosperity is prosperity. So God wants us to be prosperous. But where does it begin? It begins in our thinking. It begins in our thinking. In the book of Proverbs, the 23rd chapter, verse 7, it says, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. As a person thinks in your heart, that's the real you. So if you are thinking negative, you are thinking I am. generalizations and you're thinking that everybody's against you. If you're thinking negative in your heart, because right there in Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23, it says, out of the heart come the issues of life. When you see people behaving the way they're behaving, check their hearts. Yes, I could go down the list and tell us to check the heart of those in the Supreme Court when they will overthrow Roe v. Wade when they will overthrow affirmative action, when they're now saying that somebody who will unleash a mob on the Capitol has uh, limited immunity, when you have someone who has 34 counts of felony conviction, is still running around with uh, uh, security services and, 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 and running to be the president, check the heart. Check the heart, because that is not about righteousness. No, it's not about righteousness. It is Satan who has taken seat, not just in our homes, but he's everywhere, in the home, in the church, in the Congress. You listen to the stuff coming out of there. He's all over. He's busy trying to stop the work of God, trying to turn man's heart away from God. These are the kind of things that people look at and they say, wow, where is God? God is sitting on his throne, but it's up to you and I to show forth the goodness of the Lord. That's why he said, you are the light of the world. You are the salt of the earth. So it goes back to our thinking. As a person thinks in his heart, so is he. So let's talk about developing a prosperity mindset. Why, why is it important for us to discuss that? No home can survive without resources. Show me a home that can survive without money. Resources to pay light bill. Resources to pay the mortgage, to pay the rent. Resources to pay the car note. Resources to pay the doctor. Resources, resources to fix your hair. Resources. We all need resources. You hear the term resource. So resource means that there must be a source somewhere. And who's the source? God is the source. But in order for us to be able to have the resources, 
our mindset would have to become like the mind of God. See, because the world is an intelligent world. It didn't just come about by some osmotic nature or some evolutionary, whatever you want to call it. God said it. And what God said is equivalent to the mind of God. So the universe can understand if what you're saying equates to what God has said. So when we talk about developing a prosperous mindset, we're simply saying to you, developing the mind of God. Developing the mind of God. That's what essentially developing a prosperous mindset. All it means, develop a mind equivalent to God's mindset. Why do you think Paul told uh, uh, the people in Philippi, the Philippians, you know, have this mind in you that was also in Christ Jesus? Because if we are going to have dominion, if we're going to subdue, if we're going to replenish, if we're going to be, you know, multiplying and, and, and fruitful, then we have to have the mind of Christ. Because why? We were made in the image of God. And Jesus came to show us, to show us what it really, really means to have the mind of God. As I said on yesterday, there is a need for a shift in our walk with God. In so many times and so many places, we're looking in the wrong place to fellowship with God. We're looking at physical objects. It's all right for you to have the cross before you to look at the cross. It's all right for you to have a church building and all of that. But if you really want to develop a closer walk with God, you will have to learn how to look within yourself. You have to have to learn how to live in relationship, proximity, fellowship, with the Holy Spirit inside of you. I want to show you what the word of God says so you understand what I'm saying. When we talk about prosperous mindset, we are saying you've got to develop a divine mindset. And in order for you to develop a, a, a divine mindset, let me just put a parenthesis here. And, and and ask you to put it on your calendar now because beginning Sunday, we're going to start talking about the assurance of an encounter with God. The assurance of an encounter with God. How, how do you know that you really have encountered God? That's just a promo for Sunday. Let's get back to today's teaching. We're saying today, developing a prosperous mindset. And we're saying to you that in order for you to develop a prosperous mindset, you cannot look without. You got to look within. You remember Jesus said the Holy Spirit will come and dwell with you? He'll be in you. That's what he said. In 1 John 4, 4, we learn that greater is he who is in you than he that is in the world. It's in you. See, what the devil wants, the devil wants you to look outside. You know what he told Jesus? Turn these stones into bread, external. To Jesus, go on the top, throw yourself down, external. See all of this stuff, if you bow down and worship, external. The secret is about you getting in touch with that Holy Spirit 
that is in you. Listen to this text. The book of Ephesians, the third chapter, and uh, verse 20. Listen to this. Listen to this. I want you to look at it. You see, one of the mistakes, I have to say this, and I, and I want you to listen. I want to be very candid with you. One of the mistakes that the Protestant movement made was to throw both the water and the baby and the bad water out. And so as a result, in the Protestant movement, we do not do enough of meditation, of getting in touch with ourselves. And this is where the Eastern religions with yoga and meditations are getting a foothold. And you find some quote unquote believers leaving the church because they, they've looked out, they've looked out, they, they've looked out, they looked out, and, and, and nothing is happening. When the truth is, you got to look in. Jesus said it. The Holy Spirit is going to come and dwell in you. Sam. All right. So let's look at the text. Ephesians Chapter 3 and verse 20. Let me encourage somebody to mute yourself. Mute yourself so that uh, all will be well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. In the book of Ephesians, I want you to look at it with me and see if you agree with the, what the pastor says. I agree. It says, now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly. My Jesus. Unto him who is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think. Listen to this now. According to the power that works in us. The power that works in us. Have you taken the time to understand the power that is at work in you? Or are you busy looking at others, busy looking at things, Busy looking at the weather, busy looking at the times, busy looking at the news, busy looking at. Have you stopped to think about, to connect with the power that is at work in you? Why do you think God called you a masterpiece? Why do you think God said you are his image? Why do you think Jesus said you are the light of the world? When you begin to listen to that inner voice, when you begin to listen to the Holy Spirit that is at work in you, You remember we shared with you what scripture said and I shared with you that the spirit follows the word. The spirit follows the word. And so the more word that you have in you, the more the spirit follows to bring into manifestation what God has promised you, what God has said about you. It's in the word. And the more word we have, the more the Holy Spirit can come and bring to light, bring to our understanding what God wants for your life. 
Hallelujah. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us. Anything you ask, God can do more. Anything you think, God can do more. But the spirit of God in you wrapped up in the word of God that is in you, connected to the God who is outside of you, brings about the manifestation of what you are asking. It's about the word of God. It's about the Holy Spirit. It's about you being positioned for the Holy Spirit to work in you. What did Jesus say? If you love me, you will keep my commandment. And because you are keeping my commandment, then I will talk to the Father to send you the Holy Spirit who will dwell in you. That's why you need some quiet time. That's why you need some quiet time during the course of the day. Find somewhere to go and sit down, read God's word, and just meditate on it. God talked to me about this, about that. God talked to me. I see these problems. I see these situations. I can't do much about them, but you can. Show me what to do. Help me solve these problems. And I guarantee you, the word of God in you to solve problems, that's wisdom. What we need to solve problems, we need wisdom. We need wisdom. You remember Solomon? When the Lord appeared to him in a dream and asked him, what do you want? He said, Lord, I need wisdom so that I can lead your people. Wisdom is what we need as fathers. Wisdom is what we need as mothers. Wisdom is what we need as head of household. And the word of God tells us the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. If you hear nothing else that I'm saying to you today, I'm saying to you today, learn to get in touch with you. Have you heard sometimes people said, you know, no one is home. You, you heard that before, right? And when they say that no one is home, they're saying that reasoning, rationality, decision-making, and all those nice things, nobody's up there. Because of your behavior. Because of what you're doing. Because of your behavior and what you're doing, people say, well, nobody's up there. It's another way to say you are having some mental issues. You know, the nice ways to call it dementia and everything else. You say nobody's up there. But you can also argue that no one is in here. Because when the Holy Spirit is in here, you love others. You love God. You love yourself. When the Holy Spirit is in here, you understand your mission. You understand your purpose. God gives you a vision. And every morning when you wake up, you wake up with the, the consciousness that I'm on a mission. That's what Paul meant when he said, forgetting everything that is behind me and I'm pressing forward to the mark of the high calling. Yes. How do you develop a godly mindset, a prosperous mindset? You do that by taking the time to get in touch with the God that is in you. We believe the Holy Spirit is God. So if the Holy Spirit is in you, then God is in you. Which means you have to take time 
during the course of the day, the week, the month, the year, whatever it is, take the time to meditate and get in touch with the God that is in you. The second thing to do in order to develop a prosperous mindset is to actually get rid of negative and critical thoughts. You got to stop being negative. Do you know that negative thinking is actually one of those wonderful ways that the enemy operates? Wants you to be negative all the time, negative. You only find the negative. Nothing positive. Everything is wrong. Everything. You, you spend your time looking for what is wrong. That is not the godly, prosperous mindset. You see, because God, as we shared with you on yesterday, as Jesus demonstrated, makes the best of a bad situation. God, the God we serve. He knows how to make the best of a bad situation. You and I were a bad situation when we're walking in sin, rebelling against God, doing everything we thought we're big enough to do. But what did God do? His grace was sufficient to reach out and to save us. So if you are going to develop a mindset of positivity, prosperity, and godly, you got to get rid of those negative thoughts. When the enemy wants to put some negative thoughts in your mind, you got to get rid of it. You got to pull them down. Any imagination that exalts itself above God, you've got to bring it down. Got to bring it down. Got to bring it down. You got to bring it down. Because you are created to be above and not beneath. You are created to be the head and not the tail. Can I tell you, you're a strong individual. You come from a powerful race. Hallelujah. You got to join us on, uh, uh, how you call it, July the 4th. And let's talk about the strength of the child of God. You, you got to be a child of God. Nobody can go through, no race of people can go through what Africans brought to this country have gone through and they are still on the rise. Who was it? Maya Angelou who said, and still I rise. Jim Crow, and still I rise. Slavery, and still I rise. Lynching, and still I rise. Join us on July 4th, you'll hear that message. But let's go to Philippians chapter 4 and verse 13 and see what we talk about this business of getting rid of negative thinking. In the book of Philippians chapter 4 and the 13th verse, I want you to see what the Apostle Paul said. You got to stop being negative. You got to stop being critical. You got to stop some of these things that are holding you back. He says here, I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. So if this is the case, where did you come from with your idea of what you can and cannot do? How did you come to the conclusion of what you can and cannot do? How did you come to that? When the word of God says, you with Christ in you, the word of God in you, the Holy Spirit inside of you, you can do all things. I want you to hear this and then we'll move on. When the Holy Spirit is in you, 
when the word of God is in you, when Christ is in you, you cannot help but to gravitate toward the things of God. It's just like a person who's drunk. If you're drunk, you cannot help but to act like you're a drunken individual. You walk in, you can't talk right, etc., because you're drunk. The same it is when the word of God is in you, when the spirit of God is in you, when Christ is in you, when you are walking the ways of Christ, you can't help but to demonstrate, emanate the things of God. That's what Jesus meant when he said, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask what you will and it shall be done. And so today I want to leave with you the idea of developing a godly mindset, a prosperous mindset. And the way to go at it is to begin to take time to have conversation with the Holy Spirit that is inside of you, number one. And then number two, do away with negativities and limitations as to what you can and cannot do. We got to teach our family members that with God, all things are possible. If you stay in the word, if you allow the Holy Spirit to lead and guide you, you are the image of God. There is nothing you cannot accomplish. Why? Because what comes up is of God. And if it is of God, God will bring it to pass. Because the word of God says, whatever good he has started in you, he will bring it to fruition and completion. In Jesus' name, amen. And we'll continue tomorrow talking about the place, the role of the word of God in the home. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen and amen.